Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? What's up, Zabber? Can you hear us? Not Zab. much. Just had to uh, shock the hoodie. It, uh, <laughs> cold Dude, you're wearing a hoodie. It's like 90 degrees here. out. Was, yeah, What's it's, happening, Zab? It's, it's cold in the rest of the house, though. Yeah. What's up, Clint? How you doing? Good, buddy. I'm good. How about yourself? Awesome. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us on uh, short notice. Uh, it is yeah. uh, awesome to have you. Hey, Dave Riggs told a very interesting story about Carrie Uh-oh. Collette. And, you're, and when you showed up at Penn State, I, I like the confidence. I like, I like that you thought you could get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I uh, – yeah, I was definitely had no lack of confidence back then. And uh, that, uh, you know, my, my mouth maybe had a tendency to get my, me in a little bit of trouble in those days. I think uh, probably the story is I, – I, I, you know, in reference to – I thought that I could beat Kerry Colat and both the Hughes twins and within my first few months on campus at college. I, I think, is that the story? Is that what he was telling you? I, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. And Kerry's yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that didn't, it didn't quite work out that way. Uh, <laughs> so I had to get a new perspective on reality <laughs> after my uh, first few months. Was yeah. your mom in the room too when you wrestled him or what, what, what was it? Or how this was it? on my recruiting trip <laughs> and, uh, and the coaches were asking me, you're like, you know, we got John and Russ Hughes and Kerry Colat, you know, and, and, you know, all, like obviously in my weight class range, it's like, they asked me like, well, what do you think about that? <laughs> and I said, I have yeah, watched both. I've watched them all wrestle. I'll, I'll be beating all of them within the first few months. I'll be getting <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And, you know, and that got me this, literally. It, um, it's no joke. Though, actually, Kerry wasn't there then the next year. Um, you guys know the story with that. He ended up transferring to Lock Haven. But John and Russ were, and they caught wind of of that. And, uh, you know, and they uh, they gave me this. They gave me this. <laughs> they, would, they, would, they would choke. They would literally choke me out with my headgear while we were wrestling until I got so pissed off that I chucked the headgear. And then they would just start pounding on my ears after they were taking me down and kicking my butt. So there we go. That that's my big mouth got me this thing right here. So about that. <laughs> yeah. So he he took off and he went to Lockhaven. Did he wrestle right away at Lockhaven? I can't even remember. I think he did, didn't he? No, no, he didn't wrestle that year. He uh it took him it took him a little while, um, even to get it, it you know, I I don't know what happened, you know, that that like that year at Penn State, I mean, they had a great team. They, they were just missed. I mean, they, they should have won national championship. I mean, Sean Nelson didn't make weight for Big Ten, so he would have been a finalist, you know, or top three guy um, at, at 118 at the time. Um, who else? So, somebody else uh, that was a key guy wasn't able to, to wrestle, and they ended up uh, falling a little short, took second. A lot of those guys were supposed to be coming back the next year. Um, but man, they, uh, you know, they just had a wave of guys that just became ineligible. Josh Robbins, who was an NCAA runner up as a sophomore, um, get, you know, got in such bad academic standing. They had to leave school. Um, Kerry had to leave. And the only way he could get eligible was to go to Lock Haven. And it took him probably, I, I it took him at least a year, um, to get eligible. And Russ Hughes was ineligible, but he stayed. Um, but he only wrestled, um, maybe one or two semesters after that. So uh, don't know exactly what was happening. I know they had a transition. Um, coach Lorenzo was the head coach um, for a long time and he recruited all those guys there. And that's about the time when he had a stroke um, and was no longer able to coach. And then John Fritz came in and took over. And I don't know if that had something to do with it or, or what, but um, I mean, there was a heck of a team and we would have been absolutely in line to win a national championship when they, they brought in, it was, so it's Glenn Pritzlaff, John Lange, Biff wow. Wallers, Biff Walliser, myself, and Eddie Jane in our recruiting class. In addition to Sanshiro Abe, Kerry Colat, the Hughes twins, Josh Robbins, um, Kerry McCoy, um, you know, so, you know, we, we had, I mean, we had some real talent, you know, coming through that room back then. Um, we just weren't able to put it together the way they've been putting together for the last decade. You know, so and that's I, you know, unreal. 
That's an un- like Robbins is an Ohio guy, right? Yep. Yep. And then, I mean, how, so who all did you wrestle with? Was Robbins on the team with you? No, they like Robbins and Colat were gone by the time they we were, got there. They were ineligible. So, yeah. Yeah. But wow. the Hughes, yeah, the Hughes twins, um, Troy Sunderland hung around. He was a assistant coach for a couple years after that. So I was, you know, there were Troy, Sonny, obviously Abe, um, you know, w- was there as well. And I mean, you know, we had a really great incoming class as well. So, I mean, we still had a ton of talent and, you know, you know, really good team. We were just a bunch of freshmen though, coming in. We, we all expected a red shirt that year. Um, and we all got thrown in the lineup, um, because all those guys that were supposed to be back, uh, were not there. So yeah, it was, it was a little bit of a different start than what we all expected when we got started off there at Penn state. So, That's but I, but I mean, I had the opportunity to train with Kerry, um, you know, when he was making his run at the world championships and the Olympic team of that was pretty sweet. That was a really awesome opportunity for me. I spent two or three summers there, you know, going up to Lock Haven. He'd come down to Penn State. Um, you know, I, I got, I, you know, I was working out with him every day throughout the summer, and that was a huge part of my progress through college. So, wow, that's yeah. crazy, crazy stuff. When you so you after uh, Penn State because you're you're a '99 grad, right? That's right. '99 grad. NCAA finalist for them. You wrestled Casey Cunningham in the NCAA finals. You were yep. a two-time All-American, correct? Yeah, that's right. Fifth and second? That's cool. Yep. Okay. Right. When you were fifth, who won the weight? Uh, Eric Siebert won the weight that year. Beat Chad Illinois? Kraft in the finals. Yep. Illinois? Yep. Okay. So, and he beat the Minnesota guy in the finals? Yep. And that's who I lost to in the semis. You Kraft. lost in the semis to him. Okay, so – What's crazy about it is I remember the year that you were runner up to Jonathan Vaughn. Was that 93? Yeah, it was my junior year, 93. Mm -hmm. So 93, you're runner up to him and you're a four time finalist. What was so compelling about that, that matchup to you that you wanted to go against Vaughn? Cause Vaughn ended up in Indiana, didn't he? He went to Illinois. Illinois. And he he was pretty good at Illinois, right? Yeah, he did good. Yeah, he was four-time qualifier, I believe, all maybe All-American one year. And he battled with a lot of injuries in college, I know that. But um, now, I mean, so, you know, it was I, like, you know, Zeb, I'm a competitor, man. I, uh, you know, I, I want to go against the best guy out there. I never, you know, I back then we weren't like uh, trying to get away from each other. I, you know, you can, I, you know, we just, we weren't doing that, right? We were trying to compete against each other. And uh I, you know, so Jimmy and I had been Jimmy Johnson, my teammate, we had always been one way class apart. Uh, our freshman year, he was 103. I was 112. I was sophomore year. I was 119. He was 112. And, um, you know, we were about the exact same size. So he ended up always cutting more weight than me. Right. And so we, we both grew. We probably, we were probably about the exact same size. I mean, I could have easily been a 130 pounder. Um, you know, but Jimmy was wrestling 130, you know, and he wasn't going to go down to 125. And I'm certainly not going to ask him to go down to 125. And I certainly wasn't going down to 125 myself. A lot of people, you know, kind of said, Hey, why didn't you just go to another weight class? But, um, honestly, like that, that wasn't really even a thought, you know, um, you know, I was always confident in myself and my ability to, you know, be successful. Right. And, and, uh, and win, and, you know, there was, I didn't think anything was going to be different about that year um, against John, but um, you know, but I mean, I give credit to, I mean, he wrestled really well through those last few weeks. I did not. Um, It definitely was not, it was, yeah, it was definitely not my best wrestling uh, in high school without question. Um, You know, it was kind of in my head a little bit and uh, you know, just uh, couldn't get out of there. Right. Couldn't get to a good place to where, you know, I just, put stuff behind me and got ready for the next match. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I don't even know who I wrestled in the semis, but it was like, I won, you know, six to four against a guy that normally I would go out and probably, you know, just tech, you know, pretty quickly. So it just wasn't, um, you know, I, you know, I, it was what it was, you know, it, it all worked out, you know, the way, you know, it was supposed to work out, you know, and uh, again, I, you know, John wrestled great, you know, John wrestled great through that time. I don't take anything away from him. And, uh, and, you know, and that was probably partly what was in my head, you know, it was uh, like, man, you know, my, my confidence, my, you know, that, that what I had and had relied on so much, you know, just kind of wasn't there, you know? So, 
How, um, what was yeah. the matchups like with him throughout the year? Because you probably had him at CIT, you probably had a duel, you probably had the districts. What was the – how many times did you guys hit that year? We wrestled five times that year. Oh, wow. So we were at Texas districts and state, and we wrestled oh, in the finals of the uh, – we wrestled in the finals of the CIT and the Top Gun. What was and the what was the record? Oh my god! It was one and one during the season. So he oh. beat me at the CIT. I you know I and I won at the Top Gun, and then uh, and then he beat me at sectionals, districts, and state. And uh, he beat you all three. Wow! I didn't. He, know he that. did. He did. Yeah. Oh. And, 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 you know, yeah. And, and that was in my head a little bit. You know. I, Felt like I won the uh, the sectional and, and had it taken away from me. Um, so, and and then you know I lost a one nothing match to him in the district final. I took down. He wrote me out. Um, yeah, and you know I was just couldn't shake it. Couldn't get out of my head. And definitely it's really good though. The best. dude was really good. And Absolutely. that was what was crazy was, I mean you were on that was one of the all time greatest teams, right? Yeah. Because that would have been like Joe Heskett's freshman year, or he would have no, been not quite. grade, not quite. No, that he was my senior year. next year, right? Yeah, that was my senior year. So yeah. Like, but we started really good. These, yeah, all the really good dudes came in, and it was like one of the all-time great Walsh teams, yep. and it was like you guys were just mauling people, just body bagging people. I remember like going to the Medina tournament, and you guys would be cutting weight in your varsity jackets, and I'm like. <laughs> just did what it was like it was old school those yeah those first wrestling memories like you know watching watching those teams that was you know as a kid growing up you know not that much younger but i kind of got into it later you know found statewide but that, that was just some naughty teens man but that was probably we, we the, traumatized you jared i, I apologize <laughs> but but that was probably the, but that was probably the reason i right you went up right yeah. <laughs> The mentality uh, like, for awesome, right? You're in a tough room, right? And you're like, absolutely. You guys were the best, you know, baddest men in the room. And you're like, all right, I'll, yep. I'll bump up and wrestle them, right? They were so good. They started the Ironman because those teams were so good. Yeah. Was your senior year the first year for Ironman, Clint, or did you miss it? I missed out by one year. But missed that's out. why you're why yeah. though. You're t- you and what you and Jimmy Johnson, what you guys did is why there's an Ironman. Well, yeah, and Bill's vision, you know, I mean. Sure, sure, Bill, we all get that. Bill Barger, we you know, understand that. Everywhere you go, everybody's talking about who's the best, who's the best, PA this, New Jersey that, Ohio this, whatever. And everywhere we go, you know, Bill says, let's get together and let's figure it out, you know. And he did it, man, and it was sweet. I mean, hooked up with Flo. I mean, that was really, like, how Flo got its start, you know, pretty much. You know, built yeah, on Martin, the Iron Man. Martin, you're right. That's correct. Yep. Martin, uh, Chris Phillips. Brian yep. Roddy match was like the oh, first yeah. thing I ever uh, watched on the channel. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Yep. yep. So a lot of cool stuff for the sport came out of that, you know, and it came out of just uh, that competitive spirit, man. Like, all right, got a bunch of dudes that think they're the baddest dudes around, you know, let's get them all together and let's figure this out, you know? And it was, oh God, I wish I, I would have loved to wrestle in that tournament, but I came back after my freshman year from my freshman year from Penn state. And, and I actually coached the guys and I, man, I was like, so jealous while I was coaching those guys. I mean, it was, it was so cool though. I mean, it was just like, you know, guys returning state finalists getting knocked out on the first round and it, you know, it was just a new animal, right. Completely new animal. So who were so, some of those guys you coached then? Well, so guys on that team, I mean, so that's when Sonny and Joe Heskett were sophomores, Brent Thompson would have been a junior Scott Overholt and Joey O'Neill would have been seniors that year. Um, I'm pretty, you're pretty sure Joey didn't let me sit in his corner. I'm pretty sure about that, but I think I sat in some of the other guys' corners, coached them up, you know, Sonny and, and those guys for sure. But, um, I, yeah, who else? I mean, it was a sick team. I mean, no, Joey O'Neill and, uh, was an animal. Joey O'Neill was. was a savage. Joey O'Neill was an NFL football player. Yeah. Joey, I want to say, who did he play? Did he play for BG? He did. He did. And then was, for the Detroit uh, Lions for a little bit. Absolute oh, wow. killer. Yeah. He had no. zero cardio, zero yeah. cardio, but the guy was such an animal. He could just manhandle everybody. Yeah. He I mean, Ryan, everybody. Ryan Root was one of the top recruits in the country. We ended up signing him at Penn state and he was a beast. He was potentially a D one um, running back out of high school. Right. And, and Joey just snapped him down. Like, I mean, underhooked him, 
put him on his back and just beat him up. I mean, it was kind of like, I was just like, oh man, you know I mean? Like that doesn't, that doesn't look good for us. You know, we recruited this guy, <laughs> you know, like I, you know, and we got a guy that's, you know, he's going to oh. take his, you know, shoes off after this match and put him in the middle of the mat. And he's just pounding the crap out of our guy. I'm like, yeah, but Joey was recruited. Everybody, everybody, you know, Iowa state wanted Joey bad. I, you know, I, I, there was a lot of top programs that wanted Joey, but he, he was absolutely done with wrestling after his senior so, year. I yeah. mean, Jamie Grottle was on the team too, right? Jamie Grottle. Yep. Absolutely. Jamie Grottle. Unbelievable I don't know if Brad too. Byers was on the team and Svita, Vic Svita yet. Yeah, I, right, right. They you know, only came I, in for their senior years though. Yeah, that's right. They that's just right. came in for 97, both of those guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and then was Nate great. Dougherty a freshman? Was Nate, Nate a little guy then? I don't think Nate was in yet. I think – when did Nate graduate? 2000. So that would have been, he would have been in the next year too. So. Do you know Nate had the worst record of anyone who's ever been in the state finals in Ohio? Yeah, I can see that. He was 16 and 14 that. in the state finals as a sophomore. I mean, that happened with our guys. I mean, Brent Thompson is the same thing, man. He had a rough year that junior year. Um, hey, he ended up being third, right? And he might have been going into the state tournament with, with a losing record, actually, because that schedule was just sick. I mean <laughs> – like the, the down weekends were the, the Medina invitational. And, you know what I mean? That's, that's when they were, you know, taking it easy every, every other weekend, man, they're going out and competing against the top, you know, competition in the country, you know? So yeah, yeah. They, they got that, you know, the, the, they, they, they got that whole super tournament thing going, man. So. Okay. So hold on. I, I really can't mention who's doing this piece coming up, but I saw some, some footage and I saw a couple pictures of you doing some interviews. I can't really, yeah. I'm not really at Liberty to say there's a piece coming out yeah. about your guys your dynasty and your legacy at Walsh and the just teams you, that, you know, the, the traumatizing teams you guys put on the mat. <laughs> and there's going to be some really cool interviews and some cool content coming around. It. Oh yeah. I really, you know, I really can't talk about it, but it's, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw you doing some stuff, so it's going to be really cool. And I know that it was special for you to talk about that, kind of like how you're talking about it right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait for that that stuff to come out. It's going to be awesome. And what do you know when when the release date on that stuff is yet? There's no release date yet, but it's moving along nicely and it's coming together really well. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for it to come out too. And part of it all, and you know, I'm really grateful to the like you said, the, the people that are doing it. Um, you know, because you know, I, you know, in a, in a way, it's a tribute to Bill. Um, and if there's anybody out there that deserves it, it's Bill. Um, you know, he did, you know, just some special things, you know, for, uh, for the sport, for all of us that came through there. Um, and so, and Bill's not doing well. Uh, you know, a lot of people know that, um, you know, he's in, you know, I don't know how far along he, you know, he's, he's moving along through dementia right now. So, um, you know, part of the idea is, you know, it, it, behind it was, Hey, you know, like, it'd be good to do something for bill, but let, let's do it before it's too late, you know? And, um, so looking forward to hope, hopefully having the opportunity to, um, you know, get that thing done and done very well. And no, no, no rush, you know, and they're going through all kinds of stuff. It's great. Um, and then, you know, hopefully maybe have the opportunity to, to get bill to, to see a piece of this and, and things along those lines. So we're, we're, we're really, you know, hoping that, um, that's how it plays out. But yeah, nonetheless, it's, you know, it's a great story, you know, and really it's a story about Bill and uh, you know, and it's really, you know, Bill just wrestled in high school a little bit, you know, at Akron Garfield, right. Made it to state one year, um, you know, ended up going off and fighting in Vietnam, came back, was, uh, you know, trying to find some purpose and direction in his life. He had a passion for the sport of wrestling. I, you know, I had a great story on how Bill got his, uh, coaching sorry started coaching in the cyo youth in akron the gentleman um you know that was running the program bill showed up and hair down all over the place you know just being bill right and uh, he's, he came in and you know asked me come in and coach and the guy goes you know you, you come back with a haircut and you can coach and bill went and got his haircut and got his coaching you know career started and you know not too long after that you had north akron going and then um, everything that came out of North Akron. So, so it's a great story, you know, and uh, I, you know, it's, it really is something else. I mean, 
you know, it's, you know, he was not, yeah, it's, it's just, it really is. It's a, it's a really cool story and, you know, and, and they're looking to tell it that way. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the final product. I think it's something the entire wrestling community could be excited about and look forward to seeing. Bill Barger used to wrestle <laughs> as a caddy. Did you know that? At, I think one of it was like Firestone Country Club used to wrestle as a caddy. I believe <laughs> Probably. The story goes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but Bill Barger, man, you know, obviously there's no Flow Nationals without Bill Barger. Right. There's no Iron Man without Bill Barger. There's right. no Walsh traumatizing teams of the 90s <laughs> without Bill Barger. And it's wild. We didn't even mention, we haven't even mentioned Mikey Pasella. We haven't even mar- mentioned right. you know, the guy that you looked up to, Marcus Malika. We haven't even right. mentioned their, you know, the all time greats that they've had. You know, we said Joe Haskett. But uh, it, it's incredible what you did at Walsh. Here's the real question for me, Clint. Yep. Cleveland State kids yep. know the Clint Musser of the 1990s and the 2000s and the dude that was the baddest guy in the gym and the guy who would take on anybody and the guy who took the challenge up to take on John Vaughn and win a, you know, try to become a four time state champ and do it through the best guys. Do they know the history of Clint Musser at Cleveland State? Oh, you know, I don't know if they do too much. And quite honestly, I'm not too worried about that. Um, like, you know, what I, you know, what I, what I'm interested with our guys at Cleveland state is, is coaching them up and, and passing on, um, you know, what, what I have to them. Right. And, um, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, getting a little older here and I, I don't think I quite, uh, carry the same intensity that, that I uh, carried maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, but I, I still have a lot of that intensity kind of maybe tempered with some experience. Uh, now, what's important to me is that we give these guys a great environment to train in, um, a great experience at Cleveland State, um, you know, and we, we teach them, you know, the, the path of being successful on the sport of wrestling, right? Um, you know, that, that's what I love about it. I love the challenge of it um you know I you know I love the fact and I t- talk to this to our guys on a regular basis I mean you know when, when we're sitting there you know 25 whatever guys 30 guys uh in a wrestling room you know getting ready to scrap for the next couple hours right that that's not a your average normal everyday thing to do right uh and I remind them I'm like guys you're here for a reason we're all here for a reason we're here because you know, wrestling is hard and we like that. Um, we need to embrace that. Right. Um, and, and we need to, you know, to make that the most of that, right. To come in here and, you know, push each other, um, you know, like motivate each other, right. Sharpen each other up. Right. That's what, that's what we're here to do. Like we're going to be spending this time working extremely hard, harder than, you know, very few people on the planet are willing to work as hard as what we do um, in the wrestling room. Let's make the most of it. Let, let's be the best that we can. Right. Um, and, you know, in the process really is getting these guys to believe in themselves, um, getting them to believe in the process that we're putting them through, then getting you know them to believe um, that they can be successful and then translating that and, and you know, and, and having that happen out on the mat. Right. Um, and that's happening. That's happening at Cleveland State. These, these guys are buying in. They're they're working hard. I mean, we we've got almost our entire team, basically our entire team, but a couple guys are injured up training on campus throughout the summer, this summer, the spring and summer. And this has not happened at Cleveland State, right? It just it just hasn't. Um, so you know, we're building that into the culture. But these guys are buying in because they're seeing the success, right? You know, qualifying a few guys out to the NCAA championships this year. You know, we're putting a strong emphasis on the academics as well. I mean, you know, this is, you know, we didn't do that back when I was in college. You know, this this was not a big deal for us when we were back in college. And, you know, we probably got sold short on that, you know. Um, You know, we're putting a really high emphasis on the academic success as well, right? Um, you know, one of one of my thoughts, you know, that, that I've had and I try to translate to these guys as a coach is, look, you know, what if we put half as much energy into some of these other areas of our life that we put into wrestling? What would things look like? Right. Um, and, and we're seeing that, um, you know, we, we had the third highest team GPA 
um, in Division One among Division One programs. It just came out last week. Two academic all Americans. Congratulations! Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Two academic all Americans, nine academic all conference. So these guys are seeing the tangible results of the work that they're putting in, of the structure that we're providing, of, of the guidance that we're trying to provide them. Um, you know, so they can achieve their own success in this sport. And, and that's what it's about. It's about helping these young guys learn the process and embrace the process and and really, you know, take ownership of it, um, you know, to learn how to become successful themselves, you know, not just to be great wrestlers and, and do great things on the map for Cleveland State, and, and not just to be great students, but, you know, to, to be great people, um, you know, that are going to get out into the community and, and do really good things in the community. So, you know, that, you know, our focus, you know, that's where our focus is, you know, our focus is on helping these guys develop into to great people, right. While we're making them champions on the mat and, and stuff as well. So, you know, I mean, you know, we're going to, we're putting a great product out on the mat um, with these guys with their wrestling. Um, but we're really focused on developing the whole person while, while we're going through it. So, and, and it's going really well, guys, the guys are really buying in. It's uh, we, we got a good group. Yeah. It's awesome to see, you know, obviously getting down on the mat this year with the crazy year and then you know, the academic side of that, right. Like you mentioned coming out last week. Um, yep. So what's it looking like right now? You, you got the most guys back. You mentioned uh, sticking around campus, working hard. Yeah. Um, what, what's it looking like right now? You know, with, with the workouts and things like that. And what, what, what's the message you're, you're preaching right now? So the message is, you know, well, it, like you said, this year was crazy. I mean, we competed. So like it, for the guys that competed every event, we had seven events with our five matches and then conference championship and NCAAs. And obviously only three guys qualified to the NCAAs. So Really, when you break it down and look at like the opportunities to compete for the whole team, we've only had a few opportunities to compete, right? And all three are back, right? All three back. All three qualifiers, um, all ten starters are back. You know, we got it. We got a young group um, that that's growing together, training together, um, you know, getting better together, believing in each other, um, which, which is real important. You know, that that's the momentum you need to to really be able to do something. And, you know, we believe there's, you know, no question in our minds that, you know, we're going to be pushing for a Mac title here in the next year or two. Um, and, and pushing. We're really going to be pushing for a Mac. Like it is, it is not out of anyone can win the Mac now. Mizzou yeah. left. Yep. If you guys don't believe you can win the Mac, you're doing right. something wrong as a coaching staff. That's if right. I you believe, know. honestly, anyone can win the Mac right now. I yep. think obviously Central Michigan can win the Mac. We all yep. know Ryder can win the Mac. Yep. You guys can win the Mac. Northern uh, Illinois. Uh, uh, freaking Northern Illinois can win the Mac. It yep. is uh, Ohio. You's always got a ton of talent. Like yep. literally, I feel like the parody in the Mac right now. Matt Hill is doing a great job at Edinburgh. Yep, he is. Clarion, well, Clarion lost a pretty good, a pretty, a big piece of their puzzle. But I'm just, if you don't believe you can win the Mac, I know crazy John Stutzman thinks he can win the Mac. I know that Any, right. what's going to happen next year in the mid American conference is going to be historical because yeah. Mizzou leaving. And now there's some parody in the Mac. Yep. They won the conference every year. They were in it. We knew yep. they were going to win it. The, the budgets were different. Yep. It was a different team. It was a big 12 team. It was a, it was a power conference team in a mid mid major. And it wasn't right. It wasn't right. It was wrong. I'm glad they're gone. I'm okay with it. Good for them. But I think everyone can win the Mac, and I think everybody should think they can win the Mac. Absolutely. Um, it, you know, and that's true. It's, it's, it's wide open now. So, um, and, and yes, and every coach in the conference, I, you know, if they're not, you're right. They're, they're probably not doing their job right if they, if they don't think they can put their team in a position to win the Mac championship. And so that is the message. Like, what are we doing now to prepare ourselves for that eventuality, for that possibility to push in that direction? Right. Um, you know, and the, and the pitch is, you know, we made progress this year. We didn't get the chances to compete that we really wanted. And if you're going to get better in this sport, you got to be competing. That's another thing. We got a couple opportunities and we'll talk about that here in a minute to compete. We got to take advantage of this. Right. Um, and, you know, and when you're competing, you, you practice differently. Right. You know, when you're, you know, you're getting ready to step out on the mat, you know, you, you got to make a weight and you're going to be competing against somebody. Um, you know, that puts you in a training mindset, right? Um, if you're just working out, 
and just working out, working out with the same guys over and over again. I mean, you're, you're going to make improvements there, but it gets monotonous um, and, and it doesn't give you that spark that you need to, to get a little motivated. So, you know, the, the, the pitch was, guys, we got to get on the mat. We got to compete, you know, um, and we need to put an environment together here where we get you guys training on a consistent basis, um, you know, getting that mat time together as a team. So the progress that we made, you know, in a regular season, you make all this progress, the end of the season, you know, you, 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 you went up like this, right? Well, if that's it, then you're going down and you're coming back. When you're coming back, you're, you're coming back, not in the best shape. You're not as strong as you can be. Uh, you know, you didn't make some of the gains on the mat that you could have made improvements on the mat. You know, we, we made these gains. We want to keep that, right? We want to at least maintain that or maintain a good high percentage of that, right? So when we come back in September, we hit the ground running. You know, we're as strong as we've been all year because we did a great strength program through the summer. Our, you know, we're, we're sharp on the mat because we spent time on the mat. We worked on the areas maybe that we were weak on last year a little bit. We, we developed our strengths a little bit better and we have some pretty good conditioning and, and our weight pretty well managed to where now we'll hit the ground running. And now we don't, we don't got to worry about getting back in shape. We don't got to worry about getting our weight down. We're, we're right into training. We're right into preparing for the season. Um, and, you know, this is a great time to build confidence too. Um, you know, these guys, they, they get out and see some competition, win some matches against some tough competition. Um, you know, that, that just helps build that confidence going into the next year. So, um, you know, guys are buying in. Um, and the reason they're buying in is because, you know, some of them are experiencing success. You know, three guys, you, you know, <clears throat> three guys, the NCAAs, one that one that should have been there and a couple other guys that were, you know, had themselves in the hunt for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, guys see that um, happen. Um, not only, you know, just it's not just confidence for the guys that did it. That's confidence for the whole team. You know, this is our team. I'm training with these guys every day. Um, and, and you're just pushing things in the right direction. And so, I mean, after all this, you know, craziness, I mean, we pushed through a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I mean, our driving, you know, motivation was our guys got to compete. Our guys got to have the opportunity. We can't, we can't not give them the opportunity to compete. So we got to do everything we can on our part to make that happen. And we just haven't stopped. We're continuing to do that. You know, we got to the Northeast regionals, which was great. We had a couple champs out there, Marcus, Marcus Robinson, who's talented young man, Ben, Ben Smith, same thing. And then a couple other placers, Riley Smucker and Daniel Patton, but we got 14 guys out there competing. And now um, we're getting ready for our Cedar point duels. We got coming up here, gosh, in a week and a half now, um, you know, we're looking to get, you know, hopefully 14, 15 guys out there competing as well, you know, putting our best 10 out on our team. And then, um, you know, however we work it out, with, with our extras, whether, you know, we're getting exhibition matches or we, whether we put an extras team together, looking to get those guys some matches as well. So, yeah, that's the message. I mean, we, we summer wrestlers make winter champions and uh, these guys are buying in. So. Yeah, it's uh, um, definitely noticeable what you guys are doing up there. It's awesome to see, you know, it's a fan of Ohio wrestling. You guys, you know, you, you being back in Ohio is awesome. You know, it's a, Awesome seeing you up there. And then obviously, you know, seeing at these turns, you know, with your daughter too, that that's, that, that, that's pretty cool watching it. You interact with her and, and, and watching that, that success too. So pretty, pretty cool to watch. Clint, yeah. She's doing daughter, great. She, is she right now, there are some really good youth girl wrestlers in the state of Ohio. Yeah, there are. Um, the two Hatzer comes to mind and Talia Guntram comes to mind. Where do you place your daughter? How do you feel like she competes? whether it's against boys or not, because that's not going to be a thing very much longer. I don't think, um, I think we'll eventually, uh, we will endorse and start having a girls championship in Ohio. I think that's oh, yeah. obviously by the time your daughter gets to high school, we're going to have a girls yep. high school championship, but how does For she sure. compete and what do you, what do you see with her upside and, and where she's at with wrestling? Well, she's got a lot of potential. She's, she's a really good athlete. Um, and she's a competitor. I mean, she's a fierce competitor, man. Holy moly. I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Right. I, you know, that's what they say, right. You know, your kids are going to make you go through what you made your parents go through. So, but you know, it, it's great. You know, I love it. I love it too. Um, so, I mean, she's got those two things going for, her. um, she's strong, she's physical, she's competitive. Um, she's athletic. Um, so, I mean, we just got to see, you know, I, I, you know, she's nine. So, um, but what she's done is, uh, you know, she's done really well. 
um, in, in, you know, each year that she's competed. Um, we stepped it up a little bit this year for her and it was a challenge. Like there wasn't any easy thing to go to. The only people competing were the tough kids this year. Right. So every weekend we were out, she was competing against tough boys and she's up in age group and nine and 10. And so she took some, knock, you know, she took, you know, some knocks on the head there, but like, she responded really well. She bounced back really well and persevered. I mean, we ended up probably wrestling for six months and she definitely, she probably got about 50 matches somewhere, maybe a little over 50 matches, which was really good. And then, you know, and she finished off, you know, with two girls competitions that were really big girls competitions and they were freestyle and she never wrestled freestyle before. And she won, like she won about four and four in the first event, lost a couple just because of lack of experience. Um, and then the next weekend, she, you know, and, and she had a great experience. She got to go wrestle for the wrestle like a girl team out at the um, out of Penn State at what they call the uh, Olympic Club duels or whatever out there. And they put a team together and had Jane Valencia coach it. Um, Helen Morales was an honorary coach. So, so she showed up and and Naomi really looks up to Helen. Helen was she she got her start in the same club that Helen Morales grew up in out in Maryland. So really? and when Helen was injured, she came back home to rest and take it easy. And she came into the practice and coached the girls a couple of times. It was like really cool. And then, and then she was there when Naomi won her youth state championship out in Maryland for the first time. So she really looks up to Mar uh, Helen and I, there's not a better person on the planet that I would want my daughter to look up to than Helen Morales. So I absolutely love that. You know, we were watching her in the Olympic trial qualifying process and Naomi was so pumped. But she she get she like she gets things really quick. Like she has a knack for the sport, right? She zigs when she's supposed to zig. She zags when she's supposed to zag. Without dad teaching her anything, I I did not you know, like I've been sitting back and watching and seeing and like she just got a feel for the sport. Like so, two weeks doing freestyle, we went up to um, the club up at Walsh with uh, Mariola and Brian Dolph and Alan Frieda running that, and they're teaching leg laces and crotch lifts and gut wrenches and. She's teching girls, you know, after practicing for a week with the with the leg lace. I mean, it's just uh, she she's got a knack for it. And uh, she had that 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 last duels thing. I think she went seven and oh and, and teched all the girls and didn't get scored on. So she, she the ability is there. Um, you know, it's you know, we're just we'll see how she go, goes with. I think she loves it. Um, you know, she's nine years old. So we'll see. You will see. I'm not one of these people that I'm like, you know, we're going to be the craziest nine-year-old champ on the planet. You know, we want to, <laughs> I, I don't care about that. You know, I want to, I want her to enjoy the experience and really have a passion for it. Um, and then, you know, develop, you know, to her f full potential, which will really start, you know, when, when she starts to get into her teenage years. So. Clint, what is it like having that room and your daughter's like a novice, right? She like the but she's got like Brian Dolph showing her her leg lace and Freed yeah. and Mariel. I mean, those guys could, they could start like a RTC. Like they, they could, could, they could be yeah, your guys' RTC coaches and be super legit. And they could draw, those guys could actually draw people. They yeah. could draw good guys to train. It's like, what's it like when your daughter's getting to learn from these guys? Well, you know, I, I, you know, I kind of like, I, you know, they did a good job. I mean, they're, you know, they, they didn't make it too crazy, you know, for the kids. So they couldn't understand it. You know I mean? There, there was a couple of things I'm like, yeah, we probably don't got to worry about that just yet. But I mean, she <laughs> caught the, like she caught, the, I mean, she picked up on the freed uh, leg lace where you're low on the lace and you just wrap one leg hand under the other. And while you wrap the, your arm around the other leg, and then you catch the toe or the heel as you, as you start rolling and you lock their knee out. So if, if they, if they try to stop it, their knee just like completely is destroyed. Like she got that <laughs> like in the first practice, first night practice. And that's the leg lace she was using. I'm like, man, I learned that when I was like 22 working out with Kerry Colat when he was right. getting ready for the Olympics. I'm like, she's nine. And I mean, that's the best leg lace that there is out there. That's, you know, Teague, that's what he taught at American low singles, Boom, right to this and the match. So, you know, it is, it's, it's a little, you know, you're kind of like, you're kind of like, ah, you know, uh, you, you know, is she ready for this? Is this a little too high level for, her? and, you know, and maybe it is a little bit, but I mean, maybe not too, right. You know, these kids, uh, you know, if they, if, you know, if they got an affinity for the sport, if they, if they're seeing things, right. you know, they'll pick up on things. Right. So, 
you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't think necessarily you just uh, you, you hold them back. Maybe sometimes you you throw it out there and see what they can do. Awesome. Teague, tell us about Teague a little bit. Teague, you know, Teague is uh, doing the wrestling consultant now, and uh, we work with Teague, and I love Teague. Teague mm-hmm. was awesome to me when he was at Clarion. Teague's never been anything but but good to me, and and now he's 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 not an American anymore. He's out an American, and now. He's taking his wealth of knowledge for recruiting and, you know, what coaches are looking for and what parents and kids should be looking for. What's your relationship like with Pete Tigmore? It's good. Yeah. We, we became really good friends. We became really close uh, during my time at American. Uh, you know, we, we share some things in common um, that I think, you know, created a bond, um, you know, outside of the wrestling room that, you know, just will, it will last, you know, forever really. But um you know, yeah, you know, I don't know, man. It, it, T went through a rough stretch over there. Um, and, you know, I, I, he was treated unfairly. There's any objective person that looks at the situation, you know, he's just, he was treated unfairly. Um, and, you know, I, you know, he's a great coach, does a great job. I know that, uh, you know, obviously he went through a really tough time and, you know, didn't want to give up the coaching. He's probably relieved to be out of that uh, situation. Um, you know, it, it, there's no question in my mind that he's relieved. And as far as the wrestling consultant, I mean, yeah, no, he's got like, you're not going to find a more knowledgeable guy, guy out there. I mean, he's competed and coached at every single type of institution that there is on the division one level. And, you know, people just don't know much about the, the college process, right. When they're coming up through this, I mean, there's just not a lot of good information about how to be recruited, about, you know, the process of, you know, uh, you know, having your academics, you it's know, changing, in the right, right. The rules right. are changing by the week, yeah. the month they're changing. Right. Yeah. You know, and I mean, different institutions have different requirements and, you know, I mean, different institutions specialize in different things like, you know, and most people have no clue about this. Right. Um, you know, in wrestling, we're, we're, we're the, we're the sport on a percentage basis we're the highest percentage of first generation college student sport that there is. And so these kids are flying blind, right? You know, like uh, their parents don't know, they, they don't, they didn't go through this process. They don't know. Um, it's unlikely that they're getting very good counsel in high school on what they need to be looking for. Um, and so honestly, you know, I think there's a real need for that. I think uh, not just in wrestling, but probably across the board in sports, right? Like, what would be the best fit for you? Like, what are your strengths academically, right? What, what are you thinking career-wise, right? Um, you know, what type of program is going to be the type of program that you thrive in, right? You know, Teague's got knowledge of all of that, right? So, um, you know, I think he's, you know, providing a very, very um, valuable product to people, right? Um, and like I said, there's, there's not a more knowledgeable guy or really well-connected guy um, either. Like, you know, like he knows every college coach in the country, Um, you know, he's got them all there and in his phone, uh, you know, they'll pick up in a heartbeat, you know, if uh, so, you know, if a kid's really looking, you know, they know that they're going that route and they want good guidance and good direction on the process and everything that goes along with it. Like I couldn't think of a better guy to, to, and Teague's very detailed. He's very organized. Um, you know, he's on it. Like, he, you know, he's, he's not, he's not, you know, just putting his name out there trying to say, Oh, I'm the wrestling consultant. Like he's, you know, he's going to be on it and he's going to do a really good job for people. So Clint, I don't know about you. I was raised by rock eaters. I was raised by mouth breathing, <laughs> rock eating hillbillies. Yeah. Uh, I listen, man, I had no, uh, I had a really good high school guidance counselor. Yeah. And my brothers, you know, my oldest brother, Ferd, my brother, Chad, my brother, Chad was a prop 48, which is a non-qualifier in today's terms. Yep. Uh, you know, my brother Tate, he was a non-qualifier Juco guy, you know, and my sister didn't play college sports, but she was intelligent. Right. So mm-hmm. what was it like for you being you're you're effectively, you were the equivalent to what Patty Gallagher is right now. You were that. You were that recruit coming out of high school. You were, it's just that simple. You were, you didn't say his name. I did Patty Gallagher. He's the piece to pound for pound. Right. I mean, you were that Clint Musser was the Patty Gallagher of 1994 in the United States of America. 
Right. You know, won everything. You were a four-time state finalist. You were on the best team. You had the best coaches. What was the process like for you to be recruited in Penn State and making sure your grades were right? Did, was Walsh Jesuit good about it? How did you not fall through the cracks and end up being a JUCO guy? Well, Walsh certainly helped with that. Um, you know, so without even thinking about it, I was put into a college prep program, right? So, I mean, I didn't know that I was taking courses that I would need to be, you know, eligible, you know, to, to start in college. It just was that way, right? Um, so that helped. Um, also, you know, it was very academically rigorous school. Um, it, it, you know, it was a challenge for me. I, you know, I wasn't the greatest student. I, you know, I was you know, maybe a two seven, two eight student um, at Walsh Jesuit, but I was certainly prepared um, for college, you know, going through Walsh. So there's no question that that was a big help for me. Um, you know, I, I was, re- I'm the first one in my family. My, my dad went to Juco college for a semester. So effectively I, the first in my family to, to, to go into college. Right. Um, and you know, my parents, I mean, you know, they, they were amazing, right. They supported me. Um, you know, it, it, you know, we got the hillbilly gene too, man. Like, I don't think <laughs> Northeast Ohio, I don't think you're, you, you escaped the hillbilly lineage. Right. I mean, we, we've got it for sure. But my, my, my parents worked their butt off to, to make sure that, you know, they could provide, you know, everything possible that they could for me and my sister and all the opportunities in the world. And I definitely wouldn't have had the opportunities if I did not have my parents dragging my butt all over God's creation, you know, for to wrestling tournaments week in and week out. Um, but really, I was focused on wrestling. Like I, I wasn't thinking about like my career, like I wasn't thinking I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to be an attorney. I'm going to whatever, you know, I mean, really, I think my thought was, yeah, I want to be a teacher and a coach, you know, that, that was it. And, you know, and so I, I was lacking that part of it, but I was just so focused on the wrestling. So I'm thinking about, you know, okay, I'm looking at Iowa state. I'm looking at Penn state. I'm looking at Ohio state. I'm looking at Michigan, you know, where, where can I be a national champion? Where can I be a part of a national championship team? You know, that that's really what I wanted. Right. Um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of continue that experience that I was having at Walsh, you know, and, um, you know, I kind of had this attitude too, you know, we, uh, you know, our, our focus was so strong on beating St. Ed's. I just wanted to beat St. Ed's. So when I came into college, I'm like, man, I want to beat Iowa, right? You know, like forget going there, man. I want to, I want to go somewhere and beat them, you know, and when it came down to it and, you know, and I said, oh yeah, Penn State's a good school. Michigan's a good school. I really didn't know what that meant. You know, I didn't know what their best programs were, you know, things on those lines. Um, but you know, they had a heck of a wrestling program and it was a beautiful campus. And, uh, they had a lot of guys on that team that I looked up to, um, you know, that I wanted to be training with. And, uh, you know, when it came down to it, you know, that's, I mean, that's where I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be at Penn state and it was, it was a great choice and it was the right choice. Um, I think something now, you know, that I can impart to my athletes that I coach their families, um, is that look like, yes sport is great. You love the sport. Um, it's going to give you an opportunity. You, you may get some scholarship to get your education, but this is four or five years of your life for the next 40 or 50 years of your life. So what are we doing? What are we doing academically? Right? W- like, what are your strengths? What, like, you know, what is something that, you know, an area of your academics that you can excel in? Right. And what are the careers around that area? Right. And let's get you going there. Right. So when you leave campus, you know, off when it was American, you know, a few years ago, now Cleveland State University, that man, you're ready to step into the world. You're ready to get a good job right out of college. Um, and you're ready to just go be a great part of your community and be successful and, you know, and give a lot back to, to the community. Um, and, and that's what it has to be. You know, that's what our experience has to be. If we're going to keep, you know, if we're going to continue to, survive quite honestly on the division one level. And, and I would like, I would say look past survive and and to thrive and excel as a sport. We have to be helping these guys achieve high levels academically, just as hard as we're working to achieve high levels athletically and in the, and wrestling, we got to be doing the same thing academically. Um, And it's the right thing to do too. Um, You know, you know, the combination of great athletics, great, great wrestling, and that and everything that we learn through the sport of wrestling with really dedicating yourself to your academics and, and, and you know, doing your best and excelling in a great degree, um, you know, creates a great person. It creates a great person, you know, and, uh, it, you know, and uh, again, 
um, with also a message and a culture built around doing the right things off the mat as well. Um, and that's what we want to do. You know, we want to put great people out into the community um, and, and we want to be just a, a, a real value to our institution. We want to be, you know, we want to be a program that everybody looks to like, man, look at those guys, look what they're doing. Right. Um, if we're doing that in wrestling, we're not going anywhere. If we're not doing that in wrestling, well, uh, you know, it's a tough environment out there right now. And it really is. I mean, um, you know, we, it, it, we're still, you know, universities are, are really just now starting to feel like what the pinch really looks like, um, you know, coming out of this pandemic and things like that. So, you know, um, we got to be on top of our game, man. Um, you know, and that's part of what I'm here to do. I love this sport. I want it to be around for kids like me that, that need it. Um, that, you know, that, that, you know, that the, this, the, this is the thing that got my attention. Zeb, like math didn't get my attention. Science didn't get my attention. Music didn't get my attention. Getting my tail kicked in by Chad Owens and Jimmy Johnson and Jerry, that got my attention. Chad um, freaking Owens. Right. Was the baddest dude. Oh, my <laughs> God. Chad Owens. Dude. Oh, my God. That guy was a freak. Hold on. Did he ever – he went to Coventry. Originally yeah, at Walsh, right? He's originally at Walsh, right? Walsh, right. Coventry. Yep. Am I wrong? Nope, that's it. Oh, my God. That guy was a freaking mutant. How, he what's was. your age? What's your age to him? We're the same age. We were in the same grade all the way through. So, that yeah, he – so I got mauled by Chad for years. One of my missions in life was to finally be able to beat him. It took until my senior year before I finally got him in a workout in practice. Jeez, oh, Pete. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, he was something else, man. But, you know, phenom. But you know that, that's what got my attention, right? This sport got my attention to capture me to – you know, set goals, you know, higher than, you know, anything I probably would have, you know, ever thought of otherwise. Right. Um, you know, put my life on a trajectory, you know, where, where I could just have some amazing experiences, right. Be around amazing people, learn, learn amazing things, you know, just have great opportunities. And it's just really important to me, um, that we preserve this, right. You know, that, that, uh, we keep this going for the next kid out there that, Man, when they go to that first wrestling practice, they're like, holy crap, this is awesome. You know, I, I want to be the best I can at this. I want to figure out how those kids did that to me, you know, like, you know, so that, that's that's what motivates me. OK, how did you save? We we had him tell his side of the story. How, did you, say, how did you save Ian? How did you save Ian Miller? Why did how were you able to build a bond with Ian Miller? I've asked you this in interviews before, but Ian yeah. told his his half of it and. I just, he brought up a torn ACL. He brought up that a coach that was dinged up, stuck with him. How did you change the trajectory of Ian Miller's career? And obviously it's near and dear to me. He's my nephew, but he talked about you on our last show. What well, was like two shows ago? <laughs> Ian just, he just, he speaks of you so highly. He'd lay in traffic for you. He really loves you, Clint. How did you change the tra trajectory of Ian Miller's career? Oh, you know, I just cared for him. You know, I mean, um, he uh, clearly, you know, from the get go, I just saw his potential. Right. Um, and, and I saw that he was wore out um, and, and that, you know, mentally, he probably had one foot out the door at that point. Um, and, and I just uh, I just I thought that would be a real tragedy if this kid didn't have the opportunity to. Um, to, to realize his potential in the sport. Uh, and so, you know, I was with him his, his redshirt year, right? Uh, Kent brought me on and it just kind of worked out that I, I basically spent most of my time with the red shirts that year. Um, we kind of like, it was a great program. It was the right thing to do. It was, uh, it was smart. Um, you know, you had your varsity wrestling on their track and things on those lines. We had a whole track set up for the backups and the red shirts, right? Um, all those kids wrestled 30 to 40 matches that year, got to really good events, finished off the year at the National Collegiate Open, which was Teague's tournament that he had out there, things on those lines. And so, um, you know, I spent a lot of time with, them, right, spent a lot of time with, we trained with them quite a bit. Um, um, and, and really, you know, I, I, I observed him, 
Um, and I, you know, and, and yeah, it, to Jim, to Jim, Coach Andresi's credit, I, I, you know, and and Josh, Josh was there at the time as well. Kind of convinced him that we kind of needed to do something a little different uh, for Ian. Um, when Ian was putting his all into a workout, his output was double or triple any other athlete in the room. Like nobody was doing close to what Ian could do. Like you could visual, like the, the most obvious time you could see it was like when they were doing sprints, uh, you know, or running the stadium, um, at, you know, Kent football stadium over there. Like Ian was doing twice the work that the other guys were doing. And I'm not saying the guys were slacking or anything like that. He just had that much potential with, you know, in his body. Right. Um, and you got to treat that a little bit differently. So we, you know, you know, we gave him rest sometimes when he needed it, you know, and, and the justification was he put twice as much energy into that workout as anybody else or, or three times. And we adjusted what he was doing a little bit. Right. Um, but really, you know, got into his mindset um, and really um, try to tap into like why he did the sport in the first place. Right. Um, it's one of the things that uh, I, I want to do with athletes on a regular basis. Like, wh what's your why? Why? Why do you do wrestling? What got you started? Tap into that on a regular basis. What are those like? What are those first thoughts, feelings and emotions that you had that attracted you to this to make you want to come this far? Right. And remember that and tap into that, you know, make this your own. Right. Don't not do this you know, because you don't like somebody else or whatever, right? Do this because you love it. Do this because you've worked so hard to get here to this point. Um, and, and let's just, and let's nurture that, right? And let's nurture that. And, and we, I, and honestly, like, I did not want to see Ian walk away from the sport. It would have been a tragedy. And I feel like, I, I really do feel like if I probably wasn't there his redshirt year, he probably would have, right? He would have been um, done. He would have been yeah. done because I had to hear about it all the time. My brother would call and scream at me and say mean things. And I'm like, yeah. I, and now he's I, coaching I'm not the, you know, the D1 level. It literally yeah. changed his life, right? He's still involved. He literally in changed his life. Like, I, I don't think, I, I feel like I'm like undershooting it in the value that you provided to Ian, how you changed his life and the trajectory of his life. Like, I'm just so thankful to you. Like we talked about it at Cedar point at the uh, last thing that you brought your daughter to. And yep. I'm just so appreciative. You know that I'm so appreciative of it. You changed his life and it's not, a, you know, and it's a guy like that. He's obviously a super talented guy. I don't think he loved competing. I mm. now know he loves coaching. It's his yeah. passion. He yeah. really enjoys it. He didn't never got to that. Right. He didn't never got to the, the end of the rainbow. You know, he yep. never got through the, the, the forest because yep. you guided him through that and you, you, you re-sparked it. You, you, yep. and you found out his why and you made him wonder yep. why his, what his why was. And he, he figured it out. It was like, you took the blinders off the thoroughbred. That's what I, yeah. right. We, you know, and that's what we need to do for our athletes, right? We, that's what we need to do. You know, we need to just love them into, you know, um, their potential in this sport. Right. And, um, and that's it, you know, and, and then, you know, Ian, he got reinvigorated. He had, he had a great red shirt year, won that NCO or uh, yeah. NCO tournament. I mean, it, you know, and, and then we came into the next year and, and we kind of had to teach him how to compete a little bit. Um, it developed his game plan, you know, gave him his match strategy and it's not just come out and just toss this guy on his head, which he was capable of doing. But if he didn't do it, you know, he was probably losing that match, you know. So we taught him how to wrestle a seven-minute match, stay focused um, the whole time, you know, um, really focus in on, you know, if he if he was getting unfocused in a match, bringing him back in, um, you know, and he had a great year and he had a great NCAA tournament, man. And, uh, you know, it was fantastic. I love being a part of it. It was – I that was so much fun for me too, man. You know, the journey in, to success in wrestling is, is, is just really fun. It's an exciting thing to be a part of, right? Like watching kids have that climb and being able to be a part of that with them, I mean, it's a great experience. You know, I mean, like as a coach, you know, yeah, I, I don't know, man. You know, that's, you know, that's one of the best things in the sport too, to, to just uh, be able to be a part 
of that type of, uh, you know, journey with the kids. So, so it was great, man. You know, I loved it. I loved it. You know, um, you know, I, I loved coaching Ian. I loved every second. I, you know, it was awesome. And then, you know, and then I'll always the university nationals, man, that was crazy. That was still to this day. I, that's the best individual performance I've ever been a part of as a coach to this day. And I, I've been a, a part of some really good individual performances, man. And I'd never seen anything like that. I, it was, it, and I was so pissed at Ian too. Like he didn't, <laughs> He showed up like five minutes before the round started. Like, yeah, I, I said, do 10 sprints. You're, you're going to be up on the, he's going to be up on the mat in 10 minutes. And he's going against, um, I think it was Massa. I think he was going up against no, Logan Massa. Tyler freaking Caldwell. Yeah, well, that was in the finals, but he had okay, to be. Bo Jordan in the semis. Yeah. So he goes out and he texts Massa, like after showing up five minutes before he's about to wrestle, doing some sprints, <laughs> he goes out and texts Bo Jordan. And then he goes and pins Tyler Caldwell twice. I'm like, all right, you know, my coaching philosophy, you know, like I would, maybe you don't need to get up to get there and get a good warm up. I guess Ian's showing me, right? <laughs> like, holy moly. Total anomaly. Let's just get that out of the way. Total anomaly. For any of your athletes who watch this in the future, that was yeah. a total anomaly. He's a freak. He got Complete away anomaly. from that. Because yeah. my big thing that weekend is I'm like, oh, these dudes are 74 kilos. They're going to maul you. You're oh, yeah. Devin, you're going to learn your yeah. lesson this week. That's exactly what I <laughs> thought. Too. That's the first thing I was pissed about. Why aren't you at your weight class, man? Yeah. Well, because I can go up the next weight class and just destroy all the best guys in the country. <laughs> but then doesn't go to the world championships. And Jared and I asked him, Jared oh. and I asked him, whatever it was, two weeks ago on the show, we could go on the show, whatever it was. Hey, Ian, do you regret not going to Russia to win a world title? Because Caldwell then went and won the world championships. He did. Okay. Ian, do you regret it? No, not at all. And with zero hesitation, there was no like, eh, yep. none of that. Zero hesitation. No, I don't regret that at all. I got the fish. I got to hang out with my dad, my cousins. Yeah. Good time. I got to do what I wanted. I was, and he's, you know what, Clint, he's okay with it. You and yep. I probably still aren't 100%. okay with it. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that more about Ian probably now than ever, right? Like at the time, I couldn't believe it. I, I'm like, you, what, you, do you have any idea? Move the fishing trip back a week. Like, yeah. what the hell are you talking about here, man? Yeah. And, uh, but no, I appreciate that about him. I mean, like to value his dad and time with it, his dad that way. And just know, like, no, no, like he knew what he wanted to accomplish in the sport and he accomplished it and he was good with that. Like, I admire that. And I, I and more than anything, I admire his desire to go spend time with his dad like that. So, you know, we, we can all probably, learn some lessons about having the proper perspective on all this of, of what we do. You know, it's great. It's wonderful. It's exciting. You know, it's fun to be a part of. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still just wrestling. And, um, you know, we got to remember, you know, those people in our lives that uh, are really made what make our lives important and valuable and, um, you know, and, and have that in proper perspective. And clearly Ian did. And, and I didn't because man, I was bent out of shape, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was bent out of shape about that one. Clint, can you replicate? And I know you try to, and you try to replicate what you did with him with every guy. And it's, it's really hard to, but how do you take what you did with him and continue to impact maybe a guy who's a walk on, maybe a guy, you know, cause not everybody's got that talent level. We all get that. But like, how do you replicate and, and try and treat every kid like that and figure out what a plan for each kid? How do you do that? Well, every kid's different. And you're not going to quite have that relationship with every kid, right? It just, it just doesn't work out that way. You know, um, you know, I want to motivate everybody that comes in our room to, to, you know, work their hardest, put their best effort in, um, understand that, you know, we're going to do everything we can, we can to help them succeed and things on those lines, but you know, they got to take ownership, you know, they got to take ownership and, um, you know, they got to make it their own, um, as well. And, um, and then when you get into the process, you know, you, you, you address each kid's individual kind of, um, you know, different needs, you know, like not every kid, like, I mean, you know, you know, Ian Miller is a completely different, you know, kid than, you know, like David Terrell or, you know, you know, it, you have Benjamin's, you know, Ben Smith and, and Marcus Robinson, they, you know, um, they have different, uh, 
you know, they have different things that you need to pro you, you need to address and, and develop as they go along. Right. So, you know, the important thing to, as a coach is to identify what those things are and then really get in there and help these guys do it. You know, uh, part of the tough process is, is like convincing them to do it. Right. Um, and convincing them that, um, you know, that, that you see something that they don't, that they should trust you with that um, and take your guidance and your advice on that. And so, you know, that that's a process in and of itself, you know, getting a kid to, to trust you on that level to where, you know, they're willing to go out and, you know, get out of that comfort zone, go to that place where, um, you know, they haven't been before, right, to, to get to that next level, right? Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, that's how you do it. You know, I mean, you, you get in there and, you know, and, and it really like, that's what I love about the sport. Right. So that's what I want to do. It, it, you know, it's the challenge is, you know, to, to, to get the opportunity. Right. Um, that's the challenge. I mean, um, you know, it's, you, you gotta have things come together, you know, so, so you can, you know, get to that point where you're, you're really working on, uh, you know, the fi those fine tuned parts of, okay, how do you help this kid that's got great potential? He's got really good upside. You know, he has the opportunity to make a good run here. Um, you know, how do, how do you, you get to that point of, all right, we're here now. Like, you know, let's dig into this and, and um, you know, and, you know, and make this work. See what we got to do to, to, to make this work and make you the best that you can possibly be. So, you know, I, you know, that, that's what that's I, that's a part of the sport that I love. You know, I, I, I love that process. So. It no, doesn't take uh, much for me to get motivated for it. No, that's awesome. Obviously, oh, you're wow. doing doing the right things, you know, Cleveland State, and thanks for sharing some of the stories. Want to be respectful of your time here. Um, anything yeah. else you want to share? I, I, I first, you know, we said thanks for what you did for Ian. Obviously, that's a huge piece. He's, you know, moving on, making an impact, right, in the sport. Yeah, he's so, a great coach. He's doing a great awesome. job as a coach. Yeah. Right. Just seeing him mature, you know, Zeb and I just had him on, as we mentioned, but seeing him mature over the last couple of years is just amazing you know, you know, as a person, you know, in and out of yep. the sport, but I want to say thank you. You know, we have the Cedar Point duels coming up, but you are the the yep. mastermind and the ringleader behind, you know, we are talking, Hey, let's, let's do something, you know, well then, it, Oh, it's going to be a potentially at Spire. And then it moved again. And then you're back on the phone. Hey, let's do this. And, and so I just want to say yep. thanks. You know, we got oh, yeah. eight teams getting yep. some extra mat time when they could have been, been going home for the summer, or, you know, calling it in you know, calling it in. So uh, I, I'm super excited for it. You know, also yeah. it's going to be full spectators, right? They just what announced yesterday. Uh, awesome. Still right. Or <laughs> no spectators yeah. going to be full spectators. We're going to have a bunch of, you know, youth wrestlers out there able to stick around and watch, you know, these guys wrestle. You know, some of these kids may never have seen freestyle, right? They can stick around and kind of learn and watch some awesome matches. So I just want to say thanks. Cause, cause you're the kind of mastermind behind all that. So I want to say thank you. Well, thank you too. You know, we, we, you know, I, so if you guys weren't doing what you were doing, you know, this wouldn't be possible either, but I knew that you were doing what you were doing. And we had this idea, I had this idea in my mind, you know, we, we need to be able to have opportunities to compete. Um, it's extremely important. Weren't sure what USA wrestling was going to do, uh, man. And it took forever for them to make that announcement, you know, and then they come out, you know, three weeks before the event, you know, it's not Northeast Ohio, like it normally is. Right. It's out in Omaha. You know, we, we just we can't get our team out to Omaha. You know, it's just uh, we, we just can't afford it. Um, and the fact that, you know, and so, you know, being in the situation where, you know, I'm at, at Cleveland State, I know that other programs are in similar circumstances. Right. They they want the opportunity to compete. They want to have their guys have a reason to train. Right. We, we got to provide it for them. You know, you're having your duels there. What, you know, June 5th, June 6th up at uh, Cedar Point. I think it's a great idea. I love the idea, um, you know, especially the idea of coupling with, you know, getting some good competition for and your you've team. You've seen the venue, so you kind of knew what, what you're getting. Oh, yeah. To do with Venue's that. beautiful. Oh, right. Perfect. Perfect. You know, exactly what we need. Right. I make the call to you. I said, hey, Jared, I got this idea. And and I knew you're and you're just like, absolutely, let's do it, you know, without hesitation, um, which was awesome. And I had already talked to a couple of coaches to pick their brains about it. And they were like, you know what, if we could put something together like that, that'll work out really good. And so I just put a feeler out to about a five hour radius around Cedar Point because I knew, you know, those, you know, those are the teams that could make a two day trip out of it. 
right? And, and you know, and a lot of programs are in the same boat we're in. You know, we, we can't send our team out to Omaha. Um, we want to get a competition in. Um, and, uh, you know, and then the extra selling point saying, hey, man, you know, you come out, we'll get you will we'll set it up so we can get four or five matches. Everybody gets quality matches in the day and then you hang out that night. You go to the park with your team and have a fun team building event. So um, it's exciting. I, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. You know, um, no idea like kind of what the future holds for you know, the university nationals and things along those lines. But, you know, I think this is something that um, we can do in the future too. So, you know, I we'll have to explore that, but this year, you know, so we'll have Binghamton coming out from New York, um, Bloomsburg, Lock Haven and Clarion coming from PA. And then right here in Ohio, it'll be us, Kent and uh, Lake Erie um, representing. So it's going to be some good quality wrestling. You know, we'll get two pools, you know, everybody wrestle each other in a pool. Then we'll do some crossovers. Everybody get five matches in and be a great day of competition. And then um, hopefully everybody can hang around and have a fun day at, at Cedar Point. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great idea. I think it's got potential for the future. So we'll, we'll definitely be working on this in the future, too. Other coaches have already said to me, if we, you know, if you guys can keep this going, this is something we're interested in. So short notice, love it. you said, right? Love yeah. It. I love, love getting to call the matches. I get to call the matches, Clint. I got to call a bunch beast. of your duels this summer or this uh, this winter. I love doing your duels, man. You had some great barn burners, so competitive with WVU. Yeah. You guys yep. beat Kent, and then you uh, you split five five with uh, Central Central, and it was yep. awesome. They were on ESPN, a couple of them, and then I did yep. I live streamed the one with WVU. That was a great duel. Yep. Oh man, great duels! You guys compete so hard. I love it. I can't wait to see you guys. That's your point, June 5th. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yep, it's going to be great. You do a great job announcing with this stuff, too, Zeb. He, I mean, he's a, one, he's a maniac. One man. I mean, how often do you see one man behind the camera? Dude, incredible, man. This guy knows everything about wrestling that's going on. It's incredible. Yeah, I got to get better, though, because sometimes I got to get better uh, background knowledge on guys. You know, my favorite guy is the guy from Steubenville. You're, is the guy from Steubenville going to be there on June 5th? Anthony? hopefully yeah we we we're, we'll see i think you know i like I, him he's a freak he, he's a great athlete we we yeah so freak. we got to get him back in the room but um yeah we uh yeah so we'll see now anthony anthony's got a, a lot of potential he's got phenomenal ability so yes. you know if he gets DeAndre, out on the mat deandre gonna be there deandre will be there ben smith yep marcus robinson will be oh, there too man, so you guys are well, yeah, we're, we're working on, you know, getting, trying to get the best team there. So obviously, you know, I mean, like, yeah, it, everything's just been, you know, kind of crazy. And it, we're, we're like, so putting this together, like we didn't even know we could use a wrestling room just a few weeks ago. Right. So we're still dealing with that on a COVID level. Right. <laughs> like, so let alone give these guys a schedule, you know? And so these guys, they want to get away. They're doing stuff with their families. Um, so, but for the most part, we're going to have, a good portion of our team here. I'm hoping we can have uh, our, our whole best lineup, you know, just, you know, so, you know, we want to win, you know, that that's, we always everybody <laughs> wants to win, but I, I want them compete. Yeah. I, yeah. I want them compete. So. I love it. Awesome. We Clint. Right. Love it. Freaking love it, man. I'm pumped. You got me stoked. I'm going to go run through yeah. a wall now. <laughs> well, get me fired oh, up. You're guys. supposed to run a mile there, Zeb. You're, you're supposed to run a mile. I've been running. All right, now. Well, I'm I done. Get it done now. Let's I do it. Two and a half yesterday. Did two and a half miles in 22 minutes yesterday. I mean, well, thanks, Clint. You have anything else? Good, man. Before we jump off, anything else? Uh, no, that was great, guys. Thanks. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Clint. That, that was fun, man. I always love talking wrestling with you guys. It's uh, good stuff. Thanks. Visit our friend Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant on Facebook or the wrestling consultant.com. Use code BA Hour. For a free 15 minutes. So I've been watching a lot of Teague's videos and listening to him talk about what the wrestling consultant does. And one that he did today was about, you know, it's obviously timely with now May 31st on campus visits are going to start, you know, we're at the beginning of May. So, you know, these seniors who essentially got their senior year taken, take more in the wrestling consultant, or, you know, they're, they're starting to get those, those wheels turning in parents' brains. And the biggest thing he, he, he made a list of three things meet someone in the academic department, 100%. whatever you want to study, meet that person. 
That's why you're there, right, Jared? You and I both got degrees. We went to college not because we're on, you know, we weren't wrestlers. On, you know, we we got degrees. You you have a business degree. I have a degree in adolescent education. That's really what it's all about. That's the end game, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he's been uh, through I, it. Well, yeah, of, you know, of course. And you know, he's been to all these different D1 colleges. Obviously, he was an NCAA champ at Oklahoma State. But another thing was get in front of the staff, get some face time in front of the staff. And I thought that, you know, like, yeah, you got to meet the staff. You got to meet the, meet the guys was another thing he said, meet the guys that are on the team, Yeah. get FaceTime with the coaches who are going to be making decisions, get FaceTime with the team, meet someone in academics. I thought that was a great list. Right. And some, you know, parents might not be thinking, I think it's a, he can provide a lot of feedback to the parents too. Right. I'm sure they you know, student athlete has questions, but the parents, you know, they might not know. And each institution is different. And uh, he's been through it, you know, on his own journey. He's been there as a coach at a few different colleges and uh, it's the biggest decision kids are going to make. So, yeah. So wrestling and consultant, you can find him on Facebook. Best spot to find him. Use code BA hour for 15 minutes for free with the wrestling consultant. 